All right, welcome back everyone to the final part of our Intro to Maya series. And congratulations if you made it this far. Today we're going to learn how to render your scene. Um, before we do that, I want to say thank you and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to get all the latest videos. We're wrapping this one up, but um, I have some exciting tutorials coming up as well that will segue nicely from this one. I'm thinking of making some objects that you could throw into your own scenes or if you want to come up with a new part of the home. I'm thinking the kitchen might be fun for the next one, but it'll be more of an arc viz project, so a little more high detail. And yeah, we'll learn um, all sorts of things there. Um, UV, texturing, light maps, and um, yeah, just more stuff. Um, I think that's all I want to say, so let's jump right in. All right, let's learn how we can render out this scene. So to render, we'll need to open up the render view. Um, before we start though, I'll let you know the reason why the scene looks a little bit different is that I'm using the Arnold shader, so the Arnold standard surface um, that we used in the last episode. So the colors will come out a little more dull in the viewport. All right, to get to the Arnold render view, we can go up to the Arnold tab, or we can go to the Arnold shelf and it's right here. I'm gonna click on that and here's our render view. And if I press um, this play button now to make a render, nothing will actually happen. And that's because um, there's no lights in the scene. So on our shading panel, there's a light icon right here. If I click that, everything will turn black because um, nothing is lit. So let's put a light in the scene. First, let's close the Arnold render view for now. And um, up here on the Create tab, click on that, and right where it says Lights, um, throw in a directional light. So click on the directional light in the scene, and I'm just going to pull it out so you can see it. And to um, light the scene, you'll have to rotate the light because moving it won't actually do anything. So I'm going to rotate a little bit. And on the Attribute Editor, I'm going to up the intensity a little bit as well. So now we can see our scene. All right, I'm going to close the attribute editor again. Actually, I'm going to raise it up a little more. Now I'm going to close it. And rather than opening up this render view again, I have a workspace where I've had it, I have it pinned to the left. I'm going to open that up. All right. That way you guys can see it a little bit easier. And if you press F, you can frame it on it. So that's what I just did. And now let's make a render. So click, click the play button. And there you go. Our, um, right now it's using the CPU to render and it's using that directional light to render our scene. So it doesn't look too bad. And it's an interactive render. It's called an IPR renderer. And if I were to move this scene, it updates in this view. So that's pretty convenient for us. And yeah, that's basically how you render. You throw in lights. There's other options up here. Um, there's direction light, point light, spotlight, um, area lights as well. But to really get the most out of the Arnold renderer, um, you should be using the Arnold uh, lights. So we'll do that next. But first, let's um, set up a camera because I want to show you how I set up my scene. Um, for now, I'm just going to go back to the regular workspace. I'm going to stop the renderer as well. And there we go. All right. So right now we have our perspective camera, but ideally we should have a um, isometric cam with an isometric perspective, I should say. Um, that way it kind of resembles isometric art. All right, so I'm going to make a new camera. I'm going to go to the Create tab under Cameras, and I'm going to create um, a camera. And I'm going to open up the Outliner, and I'm going to name this Isometric Cam. Right, so we have a new camera. Let's rotate it so it's facing this um, corner. So go to your rotate tool, hold down J, and just rotate it. There we go. I'm gonna close the outliner. Now I'm gonna go into the two panel view. And here's our two panel view. And I'm gonna change this perspective to the new camera that we named the isometric cam. And the perspective, and then choose isometric cam. 
So right now, um, this is just what perspective do you want? Okay. And then what I want to do is pull this camera back. But if I do it here, it's not that accurate. And I can go into the, the object space of this. But an easy way to do it is um, to go into this view and just use the middle mouse wheel and scroll that back. There we go. And now I can kind of see um, more of the scene. I can raise the camera now as well. So find the camera, bring it up a little bit, and then I'm going to rotate it so that it's looking down. Maybe bring it up a bit more. That's not bad. Maybe give it a bit more rotation and bring it up a little more. All right, so now we have an is isometric perspective. Um, what I want to do next, though, is I want to see what I'm rendering. I can't do that right now because, like, I'm seeing outside of um, what it's going to get rendered, right? And we can fix that, though. Go to the View tab here. Um, go to Camera Settings and choose Resolution ga Gate and click that. All right. And then let's give our view a bit of an overscan as well. So go back to View, um, Camera Settings, and you can choose Overscan. We can do this also in the Attribute Editor as well, right? Um, I'll show you where that is because I want to change one more thing. So here's our camera. Scroll down to um, Display, Display Options. And we just turned on Resolution Gate, so it's right here. Um, you can also turn on Resolution Gate by up here. And then I want to change the mask color. Just want to reduce the opacity. There we go. Maybe just a touch more. There we go. All right. So now we have this perspective camera. Um, sorry, this isometric cam. I want to bring it in just a touch. Maybe here is good. And then I want to lock this camera. So I'm going to choose this lock option. And now this view is locked for us. So we can work in here. We can render using this cam, and um, we can change, move objects, change materials, and it won't um, change this scene, okay? Or it won't change in the render view. Okay, so next, um, let's press play. And it's still gonna render here for a second, right? Um, actually, no, it's, it's using our cam, so that's good. Sometimes it becomes a bit finicky. I think it's actually using the, the perspective cam. Yeah, it's still using perspective cam. If you um, click on here to isometric cam, there we go. Now it's using the isometric cam. And it's doing a pretty good job. It's using the CPU, but um, if you have a half decent graphics card, you might want to use the GPU renderer. We're going to go in there and take a look at it because there's some settings I want to change. Um, okay, so let's go in there first. Up here is the settings for the renderer, and you can click on that. And I want to keep this fairly simple, so I'll just show you a couple things. Um, down here, we want to change the renderable camera to our render cam, so the isometric cam. And here you can change the resolution. We'll leave it here for now so it renders a bit faster. Under Arnold Renderer, there's a bunch of other options, but I don't want to turn this into a whole like lightings and rendering tutorial. It'll be just too long, but I, for now, we'll turn on adaptive sampling. So that, And then under System, I want to change my um, render device to GPU. And for under AOVs, I want to turn on the denoiser as well. So click on Denoise Beauty AOV. And that's all we need for this, I think, for now. And we can close this. All right. So now if we click Render, it's going to use the GPU. And the, the direction light is pretty good, but I'll show you how I rendered my scene. I'm not going to use the direction light. I'm actually going to delete it. And I'm going to use one of the Arnold lights. So over at the Arnold shelf, you'll see this Sky Dome light. It's this uh, first globe here, globe icon. Click on that, and you'll have um, the Sky Dome light. So if we go into the Attribute Editor, you'll see that we have a, a new light object. And if we open up the channel box, not the channel box, the um, outliner, you can see it's here as well. Um, for now, I'll leave these settings as is, but what I'll do is, since I don't need um, this panel anymore because this is locked, I'm going to switch back to the Arnold workspace that I have. There we go. I'm just going to bring this back a little bit, zoom in, 
And now let's try render, right? So let's just hit play, or actually we can just hit this play button here. And once the GPU fires up, it's gonna do a render and it's gonna look a little bit noise, noisy as this is um, processing. However, we can turn on the this denoiser, so click on that, and that'll clean that up. So you can see that um, it's um, lit the scene, it looks better than the directional light, right? Um, eh, it looks almost the same. But we can make it even better by using um, an HDRI image. So I'm gonna point you out to a website that's very popular to get free HDRIs. So it's this one here. Um, let me just go back a couple scenes, a couple screens. Uh, okay, so it's HDRI Haven. So I don't even know if I said that right. HDRIHaven.com. And here you can find free HDRIs. Uh, click on the HDRIs here. And the one I'm using is under the Urban tab. And I'm using um, Suburban Parking Area. So if you click on that, you have the option to just download these um, EXR um, files, images, and they're high dynamic range images that are um, we can use to render our scene. I grabbed the 4K one, but you can grab which one you like. Um, just know that the higher it is, the, the slower it'll take. Um, okay, I'm just gonna close this off. And then what you wanna do is put that image in your source images folder of your project um, folder, right? So I'm just gonna show you where that is. So here's the here are the folders that Maya's created for a project, and you'll have a source images folder. So you'll wanna throw it in there. Okay, and then um, I already have it in there, so I'm just gonna go um, into the attributes of my Skydome light, so click your Skydome light, and then what you wanna do is just go into this color option here, you'll see this checkered box, click on that, and then click on File. And then what you wanna do is navigate to the folder, right, which it should automatically detect, and then choose your image. I'm choosing this suburban parking area 4K. Click open, and there we go. And it looks like I left the render, the IPR render running, right? So it immediately updated, and you can see that it looks um, quite a bit different now, right? So we have this, and yeah, so um, it's lit our scene. It's using this backdrop to light it, and you can go into the sky dome light, and you can maybe bring up the exposure a little bit. Maybe I'll crank it up to two for now. And then I'll update in here. Two was way too strong. Um, let's do one. All right. And yeah, so that's how you light the scene. It looks already like so much better. You can zoom in. It's in low resolution right now. So for a final render, you'll want to um, maybe crank that up. And there's a bunch of settings, but we won't get too far into it, but this is just a really fast way to create a render for your scene. I wanna show you a couple other things I did with my scene as well. So I'm gonna close the attribute editor for now, and I'm actually gonna go back to the regular workspace. Uh, regular workspace, there we go. And I'm gonna go back to the single panel view. Here we are, and in my, scene i have a ground place plane so i've created this ground plane it's just a plane with an arnold material on it and then i also have um a few other lights i added to my scene i added some area lights one for the tv which i have pointing this way um, for now what i'm gonna do is turn off use lights so um just so it's easier to see and in my light group i have um, my own sky dome light with a few settings I've changed. So for now, I'm just going to disable this one. And I have mine. I have um, an area light I call the TV light. So I'm just going to open my channel box because I have them hidden. There we go. So here's the light that I have on the TV. And I'll just show you some of the, the settings I have for it. Um, for my final render, I'll probably tweak this a bit more, but I'll show you what this render looks like now in a second. Because um, I've made some changes to the roundness, the softness. Um, I also, um, I'll probably up the samples a little more for the final render. But for now, I'll just leave it. And then we have the ceiling light, which um, 
I've, I'm using the color temperature and then here I've upped the samples a little bit and the exposure I, I up to six there. So just give you a, a reference of what I did. And then finally my sky dome light, I um, have the exposure at 0.5 there, just a little more than before. I'm using the area light up here just to give it like a, a sense that there's a light coming from the ceiling of the room, just a little bit extra. And that's pretty much all the lights I have for this, along with um, that, ice, that sky dome light that we set up. So now I'll show you what it looks like um, rendered. So um, actually I might've rendered it using, did I render it using the lights I had? Okay, I'm gonna click render and we'll see. So switching back to the Arnold renderer. And no, no, this is the image we had before. So I'll show you what it looks like. I'll actually save this image. So if you wanna save the image, you can actually go down here to take a snapshot. So you can click on that icon, or I believe um, you can take a snapshot here as well. So uh, store, snaps, store snapshot. Um, okay, so click on this button here. And it's just um, stored the snapshot for us here. And then we'll make another render using the lights we have here. So uh, let's click, click play. And you can see how this one turns out quite different. Um, I'm going to turn on the denoiser. And yeah, so just with a, a few lights, you can drastically change the look of this scene. And then what I'll do is um, right now it's, it's still working. I wonder if it's using the GPU. I think I have it setting to the GPU. Um, yeah, because it rendered pretty fast. Yeah, so um, play with the lights. I would recommend just trying out different things with your scene, but don't worry about it because the, the, our goal is actually to render eventually in the game engine, but I just wanted to show you this so that you could um, render um, perhaps for your own portfolio or maybe you want to upload something to a website, right? Um, yeah, so it's still working, but it already um, is mostly completed because if I, I turn on to the, the denoiser part, most of that noise is cleared up a little bit. Um, and I think that's all I want to say about this. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. If I am, I'll add it in, but I think that's it. Okay, so I remember what I wanted to show you guys. I want to render out a higher resolution of the scene, so I'm going to do that. So here's the scene. I'm going to change the resolution first to um, 4K. And it's 4K is 3840 by 2160. And this would definitely take longer, but it'll look a lot nicer. And I also uh, changed the camera a bit. I raised it up and gave it more of a rotation. All right, now let's render and see how this looks. It's processing, so once this is done, we'll get back to it. Let's change it back to isometric cam. All right, so that render took kind of forever. I actually had enough time to put on a load of laundry, which you might be hearing in the back. Um, go grocery shopping and make myself dinner. But here we are, and the render is finished. And as you can see, the, the extra lights really added to the scene. And now you should be set on making your own renders as well. Um, just don't forget to save your scene. All right, that is a wrap, folks. That was the last part of our Intro to Maya series. And yeah, hopefully this has helped you out in starting your modeling journey. And um, just there's so much more left to learn. Lots more content is on its way. If you've enjoyed everything so far, don't forget to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't. And we will see you in the next one. See you guys later.